All right, welcome to this first video in a little video series about this pendulum and uh, control design and uh, estimation system identification for this piece of equipment. So what you just saw was a swing up controller that swings the pendulum up and then it stabilizes here on top so I can disturb the pendulum like this. The first video that we'll uh, cover today, uh, we will get to know this system and after that we will have a look at how we can interface this device uh, using the Quanser provided C hardware uh, in the loop interface. We'll talk about how we run uh, control loops from Julia so that we get uh, predictable timing. We have a look at how we can estimate some of the parameters uh, for this little device. Uh, so we typically call that system identification. We will look at estimating friction models uh, we will look at estimating an actuator model and then we will also estimate all the parameters in, in the whole system here with the pendulum. We'll go through a stabilization control, so that would be the controller that would act on the pendulum when it's in the upright position here. Uh, we will have a look at energy-based swing up control, so that's the controller that uh, takes it from the bottom position and swings it up. Uh, and then we will look at uh, sliding mode uh, control of the uh, uh, arm position subject to this disturbance that is implied by the pendulum swing. All right, today we will get to know the systems. Uh, the system here, uh, what what parts does it have? It obviously have uh, uh, the base. It's quite heavy. Uh, it has a pendulum which is attached here with a magnetic coupling, so we can actually switch the pendulum out and attach this inertia disc here instead. Uh, we will use that in, in one of our examples. Um, it has a cable here that attaches uh, to the uh, rotary encoder here. So this uh, cable goes to the encoder that measures the angle of the pendulum. It has the pendulum here. It's fairly heavy. heavy. It's machined uh, metal here and it's rotating with very little resistance. So it has some bearing here, ball bearing. So the pendulum is free to, to oscillate around its pivot point there and then of course the arm is, uh, is free to oscillate here. Uh, and if I just let it go like this we see it swings a bit back, back and forth. Uh, we have two coordinate systems we are concerned with. Um, the coordinate system of the arm here, uh, it has angles in the positive direction here and then negative direction here. And if we look from the top, yeah. and we see there is a, I hope you can see that in the image, um, uh, we have a little scale with the angles here. Uh, but uh, for uh, the purpose of, of control here, I actually will uh, reset the angle, so I, I can choose where angle zero is messed up. All right, uh, I say here we want to get an intuitive feeling for time constant. So this is a mechanical device. It's kind of a human scale here. I can hold it in my hand. Uh, and we see that it's has a fairly fast dynamics, right? So this would be hard for me to balance by myself. As a rule of thumb, uh, I, I cannot really balance this pen in my hand. That would be very difficult. But if the pen was twice or three times as long, I could probably balance it. So, so this is faster dynamics than, than a human can control. Um, once again, I let it go here and we look at it. Uh, the frame rate is perhaps not fast enough to capture exactly how quick it is, but you see that it, it has a pretty fast time constant. Um, are there any disturbances acting on the system? Well, it's a mechanical system, so there's always going to be friction. There's always going to be some amount of drive friction, even though we have ball bearings here to reduce the friction. Uh, it's still going to be there, and that's a nonlinear phenomenon. Uh, we also have this cable here. We see now there is no uh, input to the system at all. Um, but the arm prefers this particular angle. So if I disturb the angle slightly here, we see that it it goes back to this angle. If I go in the other direction, it still goes back there. And that's due to this cable, which is uh, somewhat stiff. And if I twist this cable a little bit here, we see that now it prefers another angle. 
Um, so when I work with this device here, this cable is going to twist a little bit and then it's gonna prefer different angles. So this spring implied by this cable uh, is, is kind of time varying. It's, it's not constant over time. And the stiffness here in this cable probably depends on how warm it is in this room. So that's a somewhat challenging um, aspect of this uh, little device that I'm actually happy, happy is present because that gives us opportunity to, to talk about that. Uh, obviously, if the table is not flat, we will have an, a gravity vector that uh, points in different directions. This table is reasonably flat, but that could still be a, a problem. There is not very much wind inside this room here, otherwise, of course, wind could uh, disturb this pendulum. Uh, what else could happen? Yeah, we have these end stops. So uh, when the pendulum is attached, it can't go further than this. Or the same in the other direction. That obviously doesn't apply if we attach the inertia disk, it can spin uh, freely. And then when it comes to the measurements of the sensors, they are actually uh, fairly good. There is not very much noise in those measurements. However, if we try to uh, differentiate the measurements to, to compute uh, velocity or something like that, then we do amplify the noise so we can see it. And if we would try to uh, calculate also accelerations, we would get a, a fairly high amount of noise. It's also the case that if you spin this uh, sufficiently much, then the encoder will uh, run out of uh, bits and then it will flip over. So then we will have a, a large uh, jump in, in the measurement. But apart from that, I think uh, this is what we need to know about this system. Yeah, I mentioned that it's heavy. So uh, when uh, we move this uh, arm here, we're not gonna influence the base. And, and this, the pendulum and this rod here are both very stiff, so we can approximate them as perfectly rigid bodies. Right, could the behavior change over time? Yeah, I already mentioned this cable definitely changes over time, uh, the stiffness of it and how it's positioned and tensioned. We can also imagine that the uh, uh, lubrication here changes with the temperature uh, and the friction otherwise changes. And if I place this in another environment, uh, perhaps I place it on a surface that is slightly tilted, uh, then that obviously also changes. Otherwise, uh, everything here is fairly deterministic and, and constant. Right, now we have gotten to know the system. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can interface it with C code.